Hi, and welcome. Today we are going to be talking about descriptive statistics. So as we all know, statistics has two main branches, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. And this means that when you have data collected from a population, you describe the data and then you make inference about the population with the description that you have done of that data. So we will be talking about that description of data. Now, the first step in looking at that data that you've collected is to describe the data in an easy and simplified way. But if you did just a small study, then you can easily achieve this first step by just listing each data point. Say for example, out of a class of 400 level pharmacy students that you studied for knowledge of pharmacology, you only took a sample of just four students then it's easy to list out the data from just these four students by saying the first and the second had good knowledge, uh, the third had fair knowledge, while the last one had poor knowledge. And this will be a good summary of the data. So, but in general, this procedure becomes very tedious or practically even impossible when you start to have a really large sample, say, 10 or more individuals. Even if this was possible, it will not give an overall picture of what the data looks like. So since usually in a study, the number of sample points um, is frequently large and it's easy to lose track of the overall picture just by looking at the data at once. In statistics, what we do is that we use some measures to summarize that data so we can look at the data at once in a summary we can get a good summary of this data now one of such measures that we use in statistics helps to define the center or the middle of that sample of the data that we have now this type of measure is called measure of central tendency or in another words, measure of center, or more precisely, measure of location. Now, so I, I, I want to say like data points are just like guys, you know, and you know, guys, guys like to hang out. So when you have males in a particular neighborhood, for example, the guys have a tendency to hang out in a central location where they can easily meet and gist. The same thing with statistical data. Usually when you have data, the data has tendency to get concentrated at certain values. So the data points have a particular tendency, in a tendency to get concentrated at certain points. Now so let's say for example you have age data and you arrange the age of individuals you sampled in this neighborhood and you put them on a kind of like a number line, like we're seeing here. You will have the ages like three, <laughs> this guy is three years, on one side, and on the other extreme of the line, you may have like this good old man, say he's about 70 years. Now if what we're dealing with, this ages we're dealing with is statistical data, then you have a reasonable amount of guys that will be clustered around the center all right to be gathered around the center because they have that tendency to the age data has that tendency to be gathered around the center that's just the way data is the way guys have that tendency data also has this tendency there's this tendency of the data points to behave in this way now the tendency of the data points to behave in this way is called central tendency they have a tendency towards the center and the various methods of determining the actual value at which the data tends to concentrate at this center are called measures of central tendency or more precisely measures of average hence an average is a value which tends to sum up or describe the center of that data or should i say even 
the mass of the data so if you see these data points that area where they tend to concentrate at the center is the mass that's the mass of the data now the most commonly used measures are the mean the median and the mode all right now while these measures the mean median and mode give us very useful information about the center but that's not the whole story about the data what about other parts of the data are we only just going to concentrate about at the center are we just going to neglect this young chap or we're going to neglect the elderly guy all right so a good summary of data will not just talk about the center that central location no but it will also add how far other values are from the center meaning how spread out they are so because the only thing that we have now is the central values the measures of central tendency have been able to tell us where is the mass of the data where is the central point of the data so since we have the central point we will use that central point as a point of reference so in statistics we try to relate what we have with what we already know now we already know the central points so but the central points are not just enough so since we already know the central location of our data what is left for us to know is how spread out the data points are from that central location and in statistics we use various measures to determine how spread out the data is so the various methods of determining the spread are called measures of dispersion or more precisely measures of spread some other people refer to it as measures of variation now i'll try to repeat this in another way the measures of central tendency alone even though a good measure mm -hmm. do not just give the full summary of the data because it only talks about the center of the data right we also need to know how far the other data points are how far they are from the central point to get a full summary of the data the various methods used to determine the spread of the data are called measures of dispersion or measures of variation or measures of scatter or more precisely measures of spread now some commonly used measures of dispersion are the range the interquartile range the variance the standard deviation and the coefficient of variation so in summary this is a general overview of descriptive statistics also called summary statistics we said there are two branches of statistics descriptive statistics or inferential statistics and for descriptive statistics generally divided into two the measures of central tendency and the measures of dispersion for the measures of central tendency we have examples like the mean median and the mode and for the measures of dispersion we have the range variance standard deviation and coefficient of variation now i want to close by asking you a very quick question which measure of descriptive statistics do you love the most please put your comments in the comment section below now if you have gained value in this video and you would love to see me create more content like this give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if this is your first time here in my next video god willing i will be explaining each of the measures one after the other see you in my next video but until then Peace.